episode, we talk about Ridgebacks, we talk about Rooibos, and everything to do with South Africa. Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of the PNDT Buyers Club, and today I'm joined by my two Ridgebacks, Bruce, who's eight, and the new pup, whose name everyone has been wanting to know, and here he is. He's about, how old is he? He's about 10 weeks now, isn't he? Nine, nine and a half, he's coming up to 10 very soon. His name, and I want to say thank you to everyone who first of all, you know, suggested a name, and who wrote in, there was a lot of good names on there, um, but the final name that we went with was Duke. So this is Duke, he's nine and a half, coming on 10 weeks old, He's a Rhodesian Ridgeback from South Africa, hence why I've got my Springboks uh, top on as well. And I want to say a big thank you to Mike and Judy Park, who are the actual breeders of, uh, of, of this wonderful little pup. They're based over in um, near, well, near Norwich. And uh, I just want to say a big, thank to, a big thanks to Mike and Judy for, for, you know, doing what they do for this breed. He has a wonderful temperament. He has some needle-sharp teeth. And he's been, uh, you know, nipping at anything that he can find. There's his teeth on show. Um, but uh, he's been he's been a nice little joy to have. And uh, Bruce hasn't really been the biggest fan of him. He's, any chance Bruce gets, he has run away from Duke. But uh, hopefully, in time to come, the two will be good friends. Now, the other thing I want to say today is a big happy birthday to my fiance Carissa, who's not here, who's also from South Africa. Big South African theme, so I'm sure you guys, I'm going to let this guy go, I'm sure you guys can guess what today's tea is about. This is in fact going to be the final episode of the PMDT Buyers Club for 2014. We've had a good run, I think we're on what, episode 21 now? Episode 21, we've had a good run, um, and then we'll be coming back early next year with more with more episodes. Thank you so much to everyone who's been watching and, and who's been enjoying these episodes. I really appreciate all of the comments that have been put and uh, just the reach out that we've had. So today's tea, we've had Ridgebacks, I'm wearing my South African jersey, what could it be? Well, what better than Rooibos tea from South Africa? Now, Rooibos, now, see, big thing I, in fact I want to talk about today, when you say tea, so when you have chamomile tea, black tea, green tea, there's a big distinction. If you want to classify something as tea, tea has to come from the Camellia sinensis bush. If it doesn't come from the Camellia sinensis bush, it's not classified as tea. So there's two types of Camellia sinensis bush, and maybe I might do this as another episode, but there's two very distinct types of Camellia sinensis bush. You have Camellia sinensis sinensis, which is known as the Chinese variety, and you have Camellia sinensis assamica, or assamica, whichever way you wish to pronounce it, uh, which is the Indian variety. And in fact, I'm going to do that as a separate episode. But rooibos comes from uh, a plant called Asphalanthus linearis, which grows exclusively in the Western Cape of South Africa. So at the southernmost point, uh, of the southernmost tip of, of, of the African continent, you have Cape Town, and then in that Western Cape area, uh, near the Cedarburg mountain range, you've got this plant growing. And this plant has been drunk and enjoyed by pe the people of South Africa for, for a very long time, for, for many generations. And it first became popular in Europe, in the West, and uh, not so much in Asia, but, but in Europe and the West during World War One, where the supply of black tea, or the supply of tea in general, was, was quite hard to come about because of the war. And uh, the South African rooibos tea, or red bush, which is, uh, which is what rooibos means, um, was, was first enjoyed by, by, by people in the West. Fast forward, during, for, after World War One, when the supply of tea came back, came back to its normal levels, and also the apartheid regime that was in South Africa uh, having sanctions placed on it, rooibos took a bit of a back seat in the world market, and it was only enjoyed by, by people in South Africa, but after sanctions have been lifted and after the Rainbow Nation emerged after 1994 with the ANC government, rooibos has, uh, has, has penetrated itself back into the European and also back into the, into the American market. And it's, and it's one of my favorite teas. I think, I think there's a lot of potential in this product I think in the next five to ten years, you'll see a lot more people enjoying rooibos. There's a lot to offer from it. A lot of people may have tasted rooibos that have a lot of flavorings in them. Now, rooibos as, uh, as a base product works exceptionally well. 
to have flavoring. So I've seen a chai rooibos, there's a, you, can, you can add a lot of flavors to this tea. But I personally think the best way and the way that we like to enjoy things here at PMD is, it, is the product in its natural form. And what I have here is rooibos from the Western Cape. This is farm rooibos, not the wild stuff. And in fact, hopefully next year, I'm gonna try and get some wild rooibos uh, on the website and also for us to taste up here on the Buyers Club. But this is, uh, this is the, the rooibos that is, uh, that is farmed. It's a needle-like leaf. It's not like your, your normal tea leaf, it's, it's needle-like. Some points are, are a little prickly, but on the whole, it's very silky on the hand. Now, the aroma of this, you know you have a good rooibos when you have a wonderful big nose and a big bouquet on this, uh, on this, uh, on this herb. Now, I don't even have to run my nose over this, uh, over this leaf too much because the bouquet on this is so huge. It is so sweet. It almost, it, if, I, if I was to close my eyes, I would think that I was opening up a jar of honey. Or it has that feeling of either you've opened up a jar of honey first thing in the morning or you've walked in to a candy or a sweet shop. And it's, it's so sweet, very, almost like caramel, a caramel sweetness. It's almost like opening up a, up a box of chocolates and, uh, and waiting to dig in. To a nice, uh, to a nice chocolate. Very sweet on the nose. Now the actual colour itself of the cup is red. It almost looks like black tea. But the big difference with black tea to rooibos is that this product, rooibos, doesn't have any caffeine. It's very high in antioxidants, and it has a lot of vitamin C content um, to this actual product itself. Which is why during this time of year this product is absolutely ideal because there's a lot of people who've either got the flu or have a cold or have a runny nose. This is the kind of product that you can, that you can have on the go. Now, a lot of the time you can either have this hot or you can have this cold. Obviously, at this time of year, if you're here, if you're watching this video up in, up in the Northern Hemisphere, I would personally have it hot, but this tea goes exceptionally well cold. So if you're watching this maybe down in South Africa, um, where you guys are enjoying a wonderful summer at the moment, personally, I would put a few spoons of this into about a litre of water and leave it, for, leave it for a few hours, let the flavour come out and then add a bit of honey to it as well and then enjoy it cold. Now when you brew rooibos, whereas with black tea we don't, we don't tend to brew our black teas for any more than five minutes because then you overbrew it and the tea starts to stew and you get those unpleasant flavours coming through. Rooibos, very different, you can either brew it from anywhere from two minutes to ten minutes, you don't get that overbrewed flavour coming out in this tea. And you don't need a lot of leaf because the leaf is so small and the particle size is very small that, that you're getting a strong cup anyway. So let's give this tea an actual taste. I don't have a spit bucket today because I wasn't sure if Duke would end up knocking it over. The last time I had the spit bucket, he, uh, he went over and put a pour to it. Thankfully, there was, no, there was nothing in the spit bucket bucket but the bucket was on the floor so no spit bucket today but going back to the actual taste it's there's a nutty note right at the tip of your tongue but as you get as you get the flavor towards the mid and back of your mouth you have that sweet flavor coming through and that is what you really pick up in this tea it's very very sweet it's almost like honey and it just Very, very sweet. It's almost, it almost actually feels like, like having a mixture of honey and caramel together in liquid form that's very thin on the palate. It's, it's not thick, it doesn't coat your palate. It's not, it's not like a black tea at all. Now, this is an oxidized rooibos. Uh, rooibos. You can also get a green rooibos which, uh, which hasn't been oxidized. Now, the way they produce this plant is that they will, they will trim the, the leaves off, and unlike tea where you're plucking just two leaves in the bud, you're actually taking off about a good 30 centimeters and you're harvesting pretty much the whole plant uh, at a time. And the traditional way would be that you'd cut this and you use an ax and you'd slowly chop up the actual leaf into, uh, into fine particles like this. You would then leave it to ferment or oxidize, very much uh, the same as we do in tea and then you dry it in the, hot, in the hot African sun. Now the best rooibos is made 
during the months of April and they plant and to harvest a plant you have to leave it for at least a year. So very different to tea where you need a tea bush to grow for at least up to seven up to seven years before you can even start to harvest it on a daily basis. So guys, check out this uh, check out this tea. This is going to be the final episode for 2014. Thank you for everyone who's uh, who's subscribed to the YouTube and who's seen us on on Facebook. Join us next year. We're going to have a lot more content coming through. We're going to be on uh, some of the estates as well, shooting content direct uh, from the plantation. You're going to get to meet some of the people, some of uh, well, not some of the people. Hopefully, all of the people uh, involved in making some of your some of the teas that you guys like to enjoy. Thank you so much. I wish you guys. A happy new year and I look forward to seeing you guys in 2015. Merry Christmas!